The Watergate scandal was, and continues to be, the most infamous case of government corruption within the executive branch of the United States government. The incident, which spanned over a year, affected the public opinion of America's highest office and desensitized the public to the possibility of presidential conspiracy for years to come. Knee-deep in the Vietnam War and running for re-election as president, Nixon began to worry about his chances of winning the public vote for a second term. In order to secure his chances of success, the president hired a team of five men, including James W. McCord, a former CIA officer and electronics expert, to infiltrate the Watergate Hotel, home of the Democratic headquarters. On the night of June 17, 1972, the men broke into the building and placed recording devices and various files throughout the building. However, the attempt proved unsuccessful when the burglars were caught due to conspicuously placed tape over the door locks, which was noticed by the security guards of the building. After a brief investigation, the five men were eventually arrested and sent to trial in 1973. The burglars pled guilty to their indictments, but evidence later arose through a letter to Judge John Sirica, which explained that superior Republican officials were aware of the scandal and had paid the men hush money to plead guilty. To make the matter even more interesting, the letter was written by James W. McCord himself. Hurry up, man. Hurry up, man! Go! I'm working on it, man! God! Hurry up, man. Why is there tape on the door? Something smells fishy. Stop! He's a cop! You have the right to remain. Oh. Am I under arrest, man? Yeah, totally, man. It's all good, though. Cool. Stay quiet! Stop! Stay quiet! President Nixon, five of your lackeys were caught breaking into the Democratic headquarters at Watergate. Dios mio! My name is Judge John Sirica, and what were you doing? Nothing, man. I plead the fifth. I plead the fourth. And the, and the sixth. Twenty-third. <laughs> As more incriminating information continued to come to light, the link between the incident and President Nixon grew ever closer to discovery. Letters were found connecting Nixon to the cover-up of the break-in at Watergate, and people soon found that Nixon was utilizing a plethora of illegal practices, including wiretapping the phones of Democrats and prominent journalists. President Nixon, we found this incriminating letter! Dios mio. Okay, go get my six A's, and they will clean up this mess. <laughs> Soon enough, all six of Nixon's aides were accused of attempting to block the investigation and were successfully convicted by a federal grand jury. The public caught word that Nixon had illegal tapes in his office which would prove his involvement. However, Nixon denied the release until he eventually saw no other option and cut his losses. The profane and scandalous nature of his comments on the tapes shocked everyone and placed the president under a scrutinizing public spotlight. Nixon's aides, you're under arrest for trying to block our investigation. Oh no. President Nixon, I'm going to have to ask you to hand over those tapes. You and what army? The U.S. court system. Ah, oh, jeez. In 1974, the Judiciary Committee approved of impeachment articles against Nixon and subsequently forced his resignation. He left the office on August 9, 1974, tainted and damaged from conspiracies which to this day have been difficult to overcome. Hello, the people of America. My 
My name is President Nixon. <laughs> Never saw you for president. I do bad thing and I get punished. The United States continues to hold the president's office in the highest standard as the position of the leader of the free world. However, the Watergate scandal ultimately desensitized the American public to the idea of federal conspiracy.